Hi everyone, my name is Russian Adam and today I have another wonderful, a bit controversial but very very interesting topic. Today I would love to speak about civet. I will tell you briefly what is civet and I will describe how it smells synthetic versus natural and then I will try to answer my own question the question that was so important for me is there a such thing as ethical civet or not so let's go into it and talk about civet what is civet? it is a musk, animal musk derived from a civet cat as you probably know so it has a very big history in perfume making however to my surprise I came across very very old maybe nearly 50, 60 or even 100 years old synthetic civet so it means that for very long time you know this ingredient been substituted with synthetic alternatives and probably it is to do with its nature how it is collected and the fact that many believe that it is unethical so how civet smells natural civet has a very very intense powerful aggressive aroma it smells of feces it smells of animal butt if you will so it's very controversial type of a smell and most people do not like it however it acts as an amazing fixative in a perfume and it acts as a modifier it brings depth it changes the notes in a way that almost no other ingredient capable of so by adding civet you adding depth to your perfume you adding if you have this target an animalic tones you adding animalic nuances as well as changing how other ingredients interact within a composition so let's speak about the difference between natural and synthetic civet uh, natural civet as i mentioned it has a very intense very aggressive type of smell and to be very honest with you i do love smell of civet i do absolutely love raw civet paste and how it smells to me it smells very buttery it smells creamy it smells very very sweet and it also has this obviously animalic character which i personally enjoy and it might sound crazy to most people especially those who try pure civet paste but I do deeply enjoy this smell and I would even wear civet paste raw on skin natural civet paste because it has this richness butteriness sweetness and amazing animalic nuances and it just touches my inner being and makes me go like mm, it triggers the deeper brain cells and it gives me this type of feeling that no other ingredient capable of delivering except probably deer musk yeah so how synthetic civet smells synthetic civet smells quite similar quite similar and in my personal opinion from all different musks we have our castorium severe deer musk and other types of musks that are commonly used in perfumes civet synthetic civet is the closest 
in its send profile to the natural thing however it has some main differences the main difference is that synthetic civet is much sharper it's much sharper and it has this almost I mean there are different types of synthetic civet obviously you might find some that are more sweet more buttery some goes more animalic but in general it has a bit of a plasticky of putting sharp note to it so this is what I do not like and then we come into a question that was so important to me personally is there ethical civet and until this day I believed I used to believe that there is no ethical civet and to me it was just a plain black and white you know the cats kept in small cages and then they are tortured during the process of collecting civet paste from their bodies similar to deer musk civet is civet paste contained within a gland situated in the body of a cat so you have to you know grab the cat and squeeze it and you know push the paste out and collect it with the spoon so it appeared to me that it is very unethical and i used to think and believe that you know during this process cat is suffering so i was against it and i never used a natural civet paste in any of my perfume compositions starting from Uzen, Inverno Russo and others perfumes I never used natural civet always always it was labeled and listed as synthetic civet so I've been using synthetic civet for this very reason however recently I, I came across a person in Ethiopia a farmer an owner of a farm that deals with civet cat and collecting civet paste by himself so I've been able to get a really in-depth understanding how it works how it looks like how often it's done you know how the cats are fed what type of cages they use what type of area they have there and you know basically so many details that I was just you know happy first of all because I continuously been searching for natural civet done ethically and I end up with the conclusion that there is no such thing but then you know I came across this person and I actually done a small interview with him just asking him to share some of the in-depth details so I ask him a number of questions and obviously the most important question to me was regarding the cages how they keep their civet cats what type of cages what size of the cages how they look like and then we shared videos and pictures and I showed him our perfect of the example of ethical civet done in Indonesia where they collect civet coffee from civet cats so as you can see and as you remember in our Utluwak composition we used coffee luwak sourced from ethical civet farm we seen the, the cages you know and we seen the way it's done and we were very impressed and very happy and I showed him these pictures, I showed him these huge cages located in Indonesia where they do ethical civet farming, civet cat farming for harvesting civet coffee. And I told him that I wish to achieve something similar. And he was also very impressed and you know very looking forward to it. So we started to cooperate, we started to discuss things and as I said I interviewed him and I asked regarding the cages so what he told me is that in general the cages are like two square meters but cats not really kept in the cage rather 
they located in a wider area a much wider area that is limited and is attached to his house so it's like a huge garden where they able to run freely and have a good time and I as I understood I might be wrong but as I understood only during the process of collecting the paste they come to the cage where they then approached by human and the past paste is collected the paste is collected only three times a month so it's not that you know they torture the, this cat every single day and for a very long period of time the process of collecting the paste is quite short and it's happening only three times a month As then i asked him how he do it and this is really something like that made me think of our regular cats you know our home pets that we might have at home so he explained that you know re you really need to have an experience and understanding and gentle touch to do it so what they do they take a spoon first of all the spoon is not any type of spoon any sharp edges must be removed from a spoon and it must be a very very soft rounded and gentle spoon made of a gentle soft type of a material so that when the paste is collected you avoid harming the cat its gland and its skin so as i understood it cats come into the cage and then they take and hold the cat and he, as he explained is just as a, a large a large dog you know it might bark a bit it might show some signs of being uncomfortable it might make some sound showing that it's kind of angry just as we often cut claws you know for our home pets for our home cats it might even bite you if you you know squeeze it too tight or whatnot so it's uh, really depending on the cat's mood and the way how you approach it so they take in the cat they hold it and then very gently very softly they move towards the gland they squeeze the gland gently with their hands and then with this soft very soft spoon they softly collect the paste and it is around 10 to i believe 30 grams 20 to 30 grams of civet paste they able to collect per time from a cat depending on its size and how it's been fed in terms of the feeding they feeding it you know very well it eats uh, meat and eggs so this is <laughs> also i found uh, very interesting and as i said it's all to do with experience and the way you do it you know if you squeeze it a bit tight if you do it a bit harsh if your spoon is sharp obviously the cat might suffer and feel very uncomfortable but if you do have experience and knowledge then it can be done in a very soft way so that's what they are doing as i mentioned i used to believe that it is plain black and white there is a civet paste and it is unethical it cannot be collected nicely and softly because i just didn't know how it's done and i didn't know all these details you know about the spoon the way you hold it the way you squeeze the uh, the gland you know it's all can be done softly with experience and of course the fact that someone treating animals the way that he wanted to be treated you know it's the animals living in a wider area in a garden attached to his house 
you know and uh, they only come to the cage during the process of collecting the paste this is something really impressed me and something that i'm really happy about and moreover the person is willing to you know improve and grow and really do this you know with love and and, and passion since i met this person this farmer i decided to cooperate with him and to support him and try to help him to improve even further the conditions and you know to buy natural civet paste so i purchased one kilogram of civet paste made a tincture of half kilograms and I'm planning to distill another half kilogram with sandalwood in rose water so I'm really looking forward to it and really excited about this project and from now on I will be using natural civet in my compositions I might list it in the notes if it is really playing a big role in the composition I, I might use it just for some effects a tiny amounts and my I might not list it and we will see how it goes but I already did and I already used uh, natural civet for some of my upcoming compositions and to be honest with you the smell of tincture this is around 10% tincture is not fully satisfying to me uh, I mentioned that I love the smell of pure paste and tincture missing some of it butteriness sweetness and depth even if you make it into absolute if you evaporate the solvent and concentrate it it still uh, focuses on more animalic side leaving behind some of this beautiful sweetness and butteriness that is present in the paste itself so for this very reason i will be doing more experiments i will be tincturing more civet i will be macerating more civet in sandalwood in other type of oils and i decided to distill it truly hoping that the scent released will be you know unmatchable and will be satisfying for my personal taste so really excited about this distillation obviously it's, it will be like a perfume on its own i don't know whether i will be offering it pure or i will use it in some of my upcoming compositions so it will be very old indonesian sandalwood a bit of indian sandalwood rose water and civet co distilled together really really excited about it so and i will take you to the distillation so you can see the process the way it's been done and the result obviously i'm truly truly happy and excited to do it because you know at the end of the day we're always looking for people who are willing to cooperate learn from each other and build up strong relationship achieving something you know extraordinary something very unique and of the highest level in terms of quality and it being ethical so i have many many future projects to come i working with many people in different parts of the world trying to capture different wonderful smells using different techniques so it's so exciting and really really looking forward to it and many more collaborations to come so please stay tuned and let's see how it goes see you next time